Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMulder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we are going to talk about Just Break Up's five-year anniversary. Holy moly. We are Holy moly. turning five. Uh, but first... Surgeon General still applies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Before we begin, let's just give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners, but we did. Uh, we are people who celebrate anniversaries, so we do have some expertise <laughs> in our own experience of this anniversary. <laughs> Sam and I are not professionals in any way. We are just two people with microphones that have been talking into the said microphones for five years. So please take our <laughs> advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs on the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. Sam, guess what? Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? What sound was that? <laughs> I don't know, you, you startled me. <laughs> I like to know that after five years, I can still startle you. <laughs> you just said my name so yeah. intensely. Uh, so I gave it away, but we are celebrating our fifth anniversary as a podcast this week. Back in 2019, July 16th, we aired our first three episodes and... What a wild ride it has been. <laughs> yeah. It really, Happy it anniversary. Really has been. Oh my God. Thank you so much. You're like the longest also 2018, business relationship of 2019. <laughs> oh yes. You're right. 2018. Sorry. My bad. I was my like bad. doing the math and I was like, wait Are you sensitive? Are you, my you're dad like, died in remember January my of 2019. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. And so I also got been... married in 2018, which happened yeah. right after we started this podcast. Right. Um. Yeah. That is a great illustration of how it's been a crazy couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> a lot has happened. Um, That's so true. M- you know, the least of which being this podcast grew from a little show that we wanted to have a hundred listeners for to a show that has about, what did we say? 10,000 monthly <laughs> listeners. Something like that. <laughs> That's in, that's just... <laughs> We love you all so much. We do. And we're also like baffled by your existence. <laughs> yeah. It's like on any given day, there are at least like one 2, to 2,000 people. unique people listening to Listen. this podcast, which is, is like. Since 2020, we got that statistic from somebody like, more like reading our data. People then live in my hometown. So. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> um, more than all of our exes yeah. <laughs> combined. <laughs> I. Yeah, it's it's so surreal to think about all of this. It's surreal to think about the fact that we were friends for a decade before this show. And now we talk to each other through a screen twice a week. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just all so surreal. Added to the, that, like how much our lives have changed since we started the show and how much you and I have grown. Like, I don't know about you, but... The last five years were the growing years for me. I thought that I thought they were the years before we started the podcast, but that was just not. like a appetizer yeah. of fucking growth. Um, <laughs> yes, so absolutely. <laughs> I saw recently somebody posted um, on Instagram that they were starting the episodes back from the beginning, and I know that's like your biggest fear. <laughs> yeah, it's my nightmare. It's, it's honestly my nightmare that people would like start at the beginning. Uh, but why? Because we didn't know what we were doing and because we had like more unpolished ideas or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, mostly that we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, I mean, I think that we always kind of did, but I, I like think back and I'm like, oh, <laughs> we were just so I, yeah. nervous. Fearless? Yeah. <laughs> I felt more fearless <laughs> back then. Now I'm just like fear ridden. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, it's. <clears throat> Our anniversary, so I, of course, did the thing where I turned to Google and I Googled anniversary questions or questions to ask on your anniversary. Cute. I got something from couplesconnecttherapy.com. Six questions you should ask each other on your anniversary. So okay, these are obviously questions. about a romantic okay. relationship and a romantic partner. So I'm going to make Sam answer them to the T. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> well, we are I'm in a romance them. together. That's right. Yeah, I, I feel very romantically <laughs> tied to you. Um, uh, we are going to. Oh, my God. And is, if this is the first episode of Just Break Up that you're listening to, Sam and I Sorry. are both queer people married to other people. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's not abundantly clear by our like dialect. Or... Yeah, absolutely. We are not. We are not in actually in yeah. any way romantically involved with each other. To be yes. clear, <laughs> I have not even seen his butt. Um, it's true. I've seen Sierra's still... butt like so many times. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's just so nice to look at. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. It's a vision. It's a vision. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, here are the five, no six questions to ask your spouse on your wedding anniversary or your business partner slash uh, best friend on the anniversary of your business that you didn't start as a business, that you started as like a fun passion project yeah, <laughs> that you absolutely. didn't think was going to yeah. go anywhere. That's mm-hmm. the title of this quiz. Okay. Yeah. And then it's we had to form quiz. an LLC <laughs> and I was like, oh God, now we're legally bound to one another. We're essentially business married. Um, okay. <laughs> one, the question is, how have we changed this year? But I think we should say, how have we changed um, since we started in 2018? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a great question. I have changed a lot. Uh, since 2018, I think the biggest thing is that I feel like I'm just like genu- generally more empathetic than I was yes. when I started yes. this podcast where I was like, I know things about things and yes. I know who's right and who's wrong in every situation. And I think like part of it is that like, I have grown a lot, like in my personal life in ways that are sort of yes. like empathy oriented, but also like reading through thousands of letters of people who are like going through yeah. stuff and being like, I don't know anything about what anyone is going through. Like it is just like yeah. everyone is dealing with something. And I think that that the, the ways in which I've been like privy to people's silent sufferings because of the fact that they've trusted us with their letters makes me think like, I don't know what's going on with my neighbor. I don't know what's going on with that person who just cut me off in the car. I don't know what's going on with the people down the street or the people at work. Like I have no idea what's happening in people's lives. And so like, I think that I know how people should be working and operating and doing things. And I think that I know what's right and what's wrong. And like, it turns out I don't, it turns out that like, things are way more complicated than that. And, and from this process of like getting to know so many people through the, the secrets that they have shared with us, I am like, there's, there's so much that is below the surface for so many people that I just have no idea about what's happening. At the beginning of this year or right before it, I think we counted and we've gotten over 6,000 letters and that Mm -hmm. was, you know, six months ago. Um, and Sam's so right. Like there are, there's undeniable, like there's undeniable humanity that gets revealed to you when you get access to people's intimate lives. Like we do with the letters that you send us. Um, I would describe it as like caverns of empathy that are opened up within you that, that are in all of us. It's just Mm -hmm. whether or not they get tapped into, you know, um, I feel like I have a lot more compassion and I know empathy and compassion often go hand in hand. And I I think they fit perfectly here. Um, I feel like something that really shifted me. And honestly, y'all can go back and listen to the shift in our, in our ideologies of like what advice we were giving was really realizing that the, the set of rules and understanding about this world that I was operating under was specific to me. And that I was like, I was trying to apply my understanding of things or my rules of engagement or whatever to other people's actions. And they're never going to align perfectly. They're never, I'm never going to understand someone else by expecting them to operate like me. Instead, I have to like that quote, you know, stay, be curious, not judgmental, like Mm -hmm. really opening up, like what is making them do or act or believe in that certain way. And I think also because of all your brave and vulnerable letters, it's given me more compassion for others, but in tandem, more compassion for myself. Like I can more strongly say, well, that person is operating because they have those set of beliefs or they they had this attachment style or or Mm -hmm. this family baggage or whatever. And because of that, I can have compassion for them. And I can also say, this is not for me or like, Mm. this is not my responsibility to clean up or this is, I don't have to mother them into this or 
or or whatever, because I have more compassion for other people and the complexities of their lives. I love when you say, you know, this person is as emotionally rich as you are. I, I, that totally has stuck with me since the first time you said it. Mm-hmm. Because I can see their 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 emotional richness, it's like I can honor mine more, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. um, in a way that I don't think I could when we were when we first started this show, not to mention just like how freeing breaking away from black and white thinking is like Mm -hmm. this person is bad or this action is bad. Um, And instead I feel like we've always been an empathetic show or an affirming show to other people. And I'm just sort of realizing how to harness that for myself. um, Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't when I was younger. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And people, you know, people that, are part of this community have like given me perspective on things that I didn't know about totally. or like wouldn't have thought about and been like, Oh, why is that person doing that? And like have somebody be like, Oh, maybe it's because of this or this that has been so helpful for me as like a host of this podcast to continue to check myself to be like, I don't know what that person is doing or why they're doing it. Right. There's like, there's a million different reasons. So how can I instead approach things with kindness and with empathy rather than being like, you're doing something wrong or yeah. like, you should get your act together. Um, Cause we're, we're messy. And that's, yeah, that's one of the totally. big things that I've learned a lot from this podcast too. We're just a messy, <laughs> a messy bunch. All right. Question number two, what obstacles have we gone through individually and how has this sh- how has our relationship weathered them? So what individual obstacles have we gone through that stand out and how has the podcast weathered them or adapted to them, I guess, or supported them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, you know, my dad died. (laughs) So that Mm -hmm. was, that Mm -hmm. was a big thing that happened. Like six months into the podcast. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Yeah, my dad died, and then my therapist died, and then my mother-in-law died. Uh, so that was like a it lot. It was a of, really hard year. <laughs> it was. It was a lot of things that were happening at that point. Um, yeah, and I think um, I think that the the podcast helped weather that in a bunch of ways. Like one, I think it was like a source of stability for me too to oh, like have something so nice. that like we were doing every week, um, especially at a time uh, you know like after my dad died, where I. I wasn't working at anything else. I was yeah. just doing this and like going for walks um, and rewatching Game of Thrones all the way through, right? Like I was, and so like having something that sort of got me like focused yeah. and like was really helpful. Um, obviously like the community support that came during that time and like in all of those different things, right? Like, um, you know, I am not on social media anymore, but what I was at the time and like so many floods of like kind messages from people, which was really, really wonderful and touching. Um, And I also like, I think that I've processed through a lot of that stuff in real time on this podcast through like answering other people's questions, you know, like seeing other people's experiences and having and seeing myself in them and being like, Oh, from this is what it looks like from the outside around like what this person is going through has been also really helpful to say like, Oh, maybe that is what's happening for me, but I just can't see it because I'm so like in it, you know? Um, and like selfishly, I think that it makes it feel a little bit worth it, worth it's not the right word, but like it helps it make a little more sense to say like, if I can, if I've gone through this and I can be on this podcast Mm -hmm. to help other people, by sharing my experience, like it can have a little bit of meaning to it in ways that I don't know that I could, if I was just like sort of sitting on my own kind of thinking about it, sharing it with my friends, which obviously I do. And that's meaningful, but, um, it's helpful. It's helpful to feel like this has some sort of purpose. Relatable. I think people find a lot of purpose in, in sharing their pain and and finding purpose in that suffering. That, Mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense to me. And I didn't think about the source of stability. Like you and I off air will be like, oh, <laughs> we, we put out so much content. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, from my end of things, I feel like this is when we get to hang out. You know, this For is sure. my time with my friend, you know, yep. mm-hmm. it, and it, there is, of course, the work aspects to it. But um, I love that it is a source of stability during that tumultuous time. Um, I, I, 
I went through like some challenging things as w- as well, uh, mm-hmm. but for the sake of sort of not repeating what you just said, which is <laughs> was was so I so agree. Like it's so yeah. helpful to like process things in with our community and feel supported and loved by them and and whatnot. Um, I will say a per- like a personal thing, like. And I'm only saying this because it's just so fucking true. I've said this before, but like, I did not know what an anxious attachment style was when I started this show. (laughs) Yeah. And it is, it is 100% me, you know, we're going to read a a letter later this week that talked about like a, an emotionally volatile parent and a, and a disconnected one. Mm -hmm. And it just was even, even today I was like, damn, that is so illuminating for me to read from someone else's perspective about this. And I'm sure it I'm sure it was like more apparent than I think it was, but I feel like if you went back and listened to the last five years, you would hear the undertones of me processing and and dealing with and figuring out that this that that I have this attachment style that affects my anxiety and my nervous system and my relationships and my friendships and if it's not if it's not blatant, you can you can hear it, you know. Mm-hmm. I got into this wonderful relationship with my wife, you know, the same month that we started this podcast. And it really, when you're in a safe, stable place, that's when like your shit comes out <laughs> to play. <laughs> <laughs> and I, there were moments in which I felt like I was really exposed, like my, my, the, this broken part of me was really exposed in this relationship. And I had this podcast to support me as a place to like work through it not mm-hmm. as a therapy space but as a supplemental space where again we le- we learn so much from y'all's letters we learn so much from the conversations that you contribute to um because you share your experiences like i this isn't like a tangible yeah it's an obstacle like the question says it i really had to f- to meet and face um my attachment style and how it was showing up in my life in a thousand silent ways that I hadn't really named yet. Um, Mm. And the podcast has led me to so much empowerment over it. And I am so grateful. Like I've uh, like, again, the appetizer learning years (laughs) that came before the podcast. And then this is like the real meal (laughs) of learning, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, or a personal growth or whatever. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, Um, Okay, number uh, four. What turns me on about you after all these years together? Mm, Your silky (laughs) hair. Your beautiful butt. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Mine's your intellect. (laughs) Ooh, okay. Uh, Anyway, that's obviously about a romantic partner, but I thought, like, what turns you on or what excites you? about doing the podcast after all these years. I love that it's still fun. You know, like, yeah, I think that that, we still laugh too. Yeah. We still like, you know, I think it's wonderful that it is like in so many ways, it just feels like the two of us hanging out and like making jokes with each other. And I love that. Um, I still get surprised by the things that you say (laughs) in response to other people's letters where I'm like, Oh, I know (laughs) how Sierra is going to answer this one. Right. Like we've answered this letter a bunch of times. And then you're like, you say something and I'm like, Oh, that's like a, that's so profound and so different than what I would have expected us to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, it's fun to like, I know that I make jokes about like being mortified by the idea that people are going to listen to the first episode, but I also like, I think it's, I think that it's lovely that you and I have grown so much in this podcast and that like the folks who listen to us, like see and appreciate that growth and like keep coming back and are like on their own growth journeys with us. Right. Like, it's not just like, Oh, these tools who think they know more than everyone else. It's like, Oh no, we're all figuring this out together. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I totally agree. Um, What excites me most about the show? Yeah. I think like three years ago, I would have said like, because it feels like the sky's the limit. Like we were just, we really felt like the 
that growth was so pal- palatable and we could do like anything, you know, just mm-hmm. break up book, just break up tour, just break up retreat, which I always wanted to do. But Spencer and Sam were both like, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> they're like, this is not profitable, <laughs> Sierra. You're going to lose money. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think what excites me now is. Yeah, the learning. Honestly, I still feel like I learned so much um, from our listeners and their letters and you and like, to be honest, hosting this show is such a privilege because um, like, for example, I talked about my anxious attachment and how I've worked through it or met it more intimately during this show um, and accepted it. And honestly, our recording sessions are me putting that knowledge into action into practice Mm. into conversation and then i go and i practice those things that i say to you all with my spouse hypothetically or for sure or whatever and it it is just such a privilege to have a space like that it's a privilege to have a friendship where like we truly were always so bonded over these sort of more vulnerable conversations um Yeah. yeah i think that still excites me about it um and I and I still feel feel those doors of empathy opening where I still f- I start reading a letter and like that judgment comes up, that unhealed wound mm-hmm. or that black and white thinking pops up. And by the end of the letter, I'm like, oh, this is how I can see this so that I can come yep. to a greater understanding or this is how I can access that empathy or oh, for sure. this is how you can, you know, it's you exciting know, we, that yeah. like hearing everyone's stories, it's sometimes we get like a little bit of emotional burnout because like we hear the the same sort of cyclical stories over and over in y'all's letters and that but that's also exciting at the same time because Mm -hmm. it makes me feel less broken it makes me feel hopeful that people are on similar growth paths you know what i mean yep absolutely And the worst thing in the whole entire world is when I'm doing something in my own relationship and I'm like, God, I just gave someone else advice to do this differently. Oh man, (laughs) have I called myself out a couple times? Uh, (laughs) I was like, damn, Sierra, you need to go back and listen to episode 214. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, I was like, you talk a big game, Blackwell, but then when you actually get into this relationship, you're like, oh, this is hard, which is like what I always try to remember. (laughs) Which is another little cavern of empathy where I'm just like, Uh wow, we are all dealing with so much. We're all bringing so much to the table. True. And it's so complicated and tangled and we're all just trying to do our best. And sometimes our best is downright fucking disrespectful. <laughs> but like, it just, you know, we can, you and I can do this show. We can talk for three hours a week about how challenging, you know, how, how to be better partners. And then we can turn around and be not that better partner. And all, and, and then you have to bridge the distance between the two. And how do you put those words into actions? How do you put the thought and growth into action? Like that's what the podcast still continually gives me the sure. opportunity to show back, show up again and mm-hmm. again and put it into practice and, and be fucking humbled. Like we make that joke about our humble musings, but like, man, if I could not be humbled like further into the earth, <laughs> like, uh-huh. Uh, okay, next question. What do you want to accomplish individually this sh- next year and as a couple? Oh, what do I want to accomplish this year? I don't know. You go first. I'm horrible at goals. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been talking about writing a fiction novel for like 48,000 years. Mm-hmm. And I feel it. It's going to happen. I'm going to start it this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I know. No, no. I have like a weird sense of uh, out of body confidence. <laughs> Oh my God. Perfect. We're like, I just, it's like, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. Um, and then as a couple, uh, I would like to go, I would like to like hang out more. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to, I'd like to, (laughs) I'd like to get you and our other queer friends to come to like P town or, you know, Mm -hmm, like hang out mm -hmm. and do another little cabin weekend or something. Um, professionally, I want to, uh, I just want to keep it, keep it a little spicy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to figure out a sure. couple a couple new things to do over the next year to where you and I are still feeling excited about the show. And mm-hmm. I think that's going to be some changes in our Patreon, but I don't know what they are yet. 
Cool. But I think that would re-excite us. Like our yeah. office hours has have re-excited us. Yes. Um, and That's hanging awesome. out with our listeners over Zoom has like definitely invigorated us in a way. And I want to just keep finding some small ways to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay, my personal goal is to lock my knees less. <laughs> mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. My... <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You're a little old little old little non-binary person. <laughs> um yeah, and I think what I'd like to do sort of um at least like professionally for me outside of uh just break up is like find some stability. <laughs> it's been like mm-hmm. a it's been a destabilizing year for me in the, in the last like seven months, um, and figure out like what I can do to sort of make things work well for me. Um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, as a partnership, we absolutely should be in person more often because it is yeah. so wonderful for us. Um, it's just been so fun the last couple of times yeah. and like, that sounds silly, but like it's, it like fills you up in a, it connects us, I think. Um, it's good for our relationship is what I'm trying for sure. to say. For sure. Absolutely. Um, and I think it makes us better podcast hosts when we're, 100% we're m- because more deeply in relationship with each other. So yes. Yeah. Um, that's nice. Yeah. I think we should prioritize that and like we should mm. budget for that. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to our Patreon so Sam and I can be friends in person. <laughs> Cause shit airlines are expensive these days. Um, so anyway, expensive. uh, what, Last question. What three things do I appreciate about you or you appreciate about me? We can say it about our podcast, about our listeners, or my preference would be you just talk about me for five minutes straight. That'd be great. Perfect. (laughs) Why don't I do one about you, one about the podcast, and one about our listeners? (laughs) I love it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Um, What I appreciate about you is that you are always like we noticed this when you were in town with us that you are like always interested in like connecting with the people around you. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're always sort of like, I don't want to say like on, but like you cool. are definitely like taking into account and wanting to find connection with people, whether that's like having a conversation about something that they're really interested in, or even just like noticing when you are like, Oh, I'm going to be quiet because like Sam is reading, <laughs> right? Like oh, yeah. noticing you sort of like wanting to, to be in relationship with people and like changing and adapting your behavior to like meet folks where they're at and like what they want and need, I think is just really wonderful. And like, that's so nice. Yeah. Um, also like, could be manipulative. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and all of this stuff could be manipulative if it's used for evil, for sure. Um, I'm just going to pretend that you only saw it in a good way. <laughs> I did. That's why I said I appreciate it. Okay, you. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, you didn't use your powers for evil on me, at least that I know of. And if you did, you did it so well that I didn't notice. So, like, that's fine, See too. What I'm, what I'm <laughs> uh I think what I appreciate about the podcast is that it is fun. Like it's just, I just enjoy doing it. It's like, it's so wonderful that people trust us with these questions. And then we get to like muse on them, which is like one of my favorite things. And I, I think that I've recognized that like you and I are kind of built different than other people in our lives. We're like, we want to sit and have these types of conversations (laughs) with each other. Uh, Yeah. Our spouses, Not as much, right? No, Would be no, much no, no, more no. content if we didn't get into big philosophical conversations about every aspect of yeah, relationships. Yeah, that's a boring <laughs> happy hour to me. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> that's um, cute. So like that is fun and great. And then what I appreciate about our listeners is just like how much they continue to show up. And, you know, I think that like being off of social media has been like really good for my mental health and I have like no intention of like going back onto it. But the, one of the biggest things that I miss is like people reaching out to us and like talking about their experiences or responding to letters or whatever it was like it, it, there's such a community that's involved in this podcast that I don't have access to as much because I'm not on social media, but I know that it's happening that like you all are taking care of yourselves and each other and us <laughs> in a lot of really important ways. Yeah. Uh, and I just really appreciate that. It doesn't feel like, um, you know, we're like fighting with our listeners or like, we're like begging them to, to be nice to us or be nice to each other. It's just like, you are all operating with so much empathy for yourselves and other people and us in a lot of different ways. And, and I just really yeah. appreciate that. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, three things I appreciate. Um, I appreciate about our listeners that um, I always appreciate it when you all see us as like emotionally complex people, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. I think that it's really easy in like parasocial things or when we're consuming content, um, I do it in shows and, and when, you know, I constantly have to remind myself that this person has shit their pants and that they're complicated <laughs> and that they might have low bre- blood sugar or I don't know what their parental relationship is like, you know, uh, for sure. Um, and every time you all extend that grace to me and Sam, I'm grateful in my bones. I am grateful. Um, sure. it helps me keep showing up to this thing that I love to do, knowing that you hold me and Sam in that way. That's yep. probably my favorite thing about our listeners. I love that. Um, and uh, my favorite thing about the show, um, yeah, I like get to laugh <laughs> with my best friend. <laughs> and um, I also want to say, in for the sake of transparency, like Sam and I make money off of this show. It is by no means a... Uh, we are sustainable not getting rich amount of money. Of this show. Let's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That we're not getting rich off of the show. However, I do want to tangibly n- name that this show like pays for my life. You know what yeah. I mean? Like mm-hmm. pays for um, my daughter to go to daycare so that I can record this show. You know, yep. there yep. are. Uh, we are by no means getting rich off of this, but I I want to just name that like I love that I get to laugh and connect and grow and feel connected to my closest people. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that this is my job. Like I feel so grateful for the flexibility and for the growth and for the community um, that this has given my life tangibly, fiscally in in my world, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. as somebody who has always had a self-employed career in the arts and in the in content creation and creativity, like I did not see this coming and I've never (laughs) been more in love and grateful and proud of the thing that I've created. Like this is out of all my books of poetry and out of all my, you know, other crap that I made, like this is by far my favorite thing. Um, Sure. And my favorite thing about you, Samuel, in the context of this show is I feel that you are, wait, or did you, no, you're talking about in general. You Mm -hmm. answered my show. Okay. Yeah. My favorite thing about you in general is that you are committed to, to learning. Like you really, I have been humbled a couple times when I have brought an idea to you and you have been like, well, it could be this. (laughs) You know, like maybe this or, or, and like how different you are from the first time I met you, how open you are to like, even though I think it can be triggering to you, but to be like proven wrong, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you can, Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's, it's really admirable. And I, I always want to bring every opinion to you because I know that you'll have a great idea on it. And also you'd Mm -hmm. be willing to like, workshop new ideas about it like that idea stay curious and not judgmental like i feel like you are that embodied um and you're also really fucking funny like in a really surprising way like people in the show know this but like you're way funnier in person like when we're just shooting the shit um and you're fart. <laughs> oh my god, you're fart. <laughs> you're smart. <laughs> I'm a fart. That's why well, I was great. gonna say you're so fucking funny. Like your your humor is so smart, and that mm. I just that's what I need from a friend. Like man, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I think I'm yeah. very funny too. So I <laughs> I'm glad that yeah. you see that. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a superficial way about you being smart, because like I know you, I know you know that about yourself. I know that you know that you're thoughtful and well spoken, and and. And in that way, but it really is a gift to like be on the insider club of that learning, you know, mm-hmm. well, uh, you. to be on the inside of it. You know, yeah. I love it anyway. Um, okay. Well, happy anniversary. Bush. Happy anniversary. <laughs> also happy anniversary, happy anniversary to Spencer who's been here yes. the entire time. <laughs> yep. And we'll, do I, an entire, very, we'll do an yeah. entire Patreon episode just on Spencer. Yeah, that'd be so thank you, thank you, thank you to Spencer as well. Yeah, Spencer made this whole show possible. 
All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Like Sierra said, if you are interested in more content from us or for ad-free episodes, you can support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode. That's patreon.com slash justbreakuppod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can get our merchandise, buy yourself a little anniversary gift. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend, Spencer Worth Davis, literally saved our podcast. Um, make sure to check out his podcast and his music. And remember, you are always learning and growing and healing and capable of change. You are resilient. You are infinitely loved. And Sam and I believe in you. Thanks so much for listening. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs>